Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to press that bell and select all to be notified on all of my future postings. Today I will be sharing with you my version of an edible Christmas tree. That's right, my version. I am in full swing of things here at the cottage. Walking around, I've been placing pieces here and there as I am unpacking all of my Christmas goodness. It's exciting to see how the cottage is dressing up so nicely for the holidays. So, that being said, let's begin, shall we? So we're going to continue on in the sunroom. In my previous video, I decorated to the left of the Christmas tree. So now we're going to start working with the tree and over to the right. I'm going to start by using these stems, that berry stems that I purchased from Michaels. They were actually on clearance because they were part of fall. So it's just as simple as tucking in each stem and then I just, I weaved them through some of the pine branches to help make it just look a little bit more natural. Today, they just don't, well actually during when I was recording, the day didn't know whether it wanted to be sunny or cloudy so you're gonna see like right here where it's really bright and then it starts going back into focus Now I'm going to be placing these bells on the tree. They are quite large, so I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I am excited to find out how they are going to look. I love them. I actually placed three up front and one in the back, and then this smaller bell at the bottom. It was actually easier than I thought it would be placing them up at top. And I added more of the berry stems up at top and some filler, these pines. I actually purchased these from Hobby Lobby. And I added just a couple of these frosted pine cone picks. Next is the Joy to the World Amish sign. Their woodworking just has a distinct feature that I absolutely adore. I love the rich red. It's perfect at the bottom. It just gives a timeless feel, an old world feel to me. Next, I have these little cinnamon brooms. I like to purchase these and just spread them around the house and get that good scent of cinnamon going for the holidays. I have a couple baskets that I purchased from the flower gallery. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to add in some more filler right in that empty spot in the tree underneath the bell. And these little gold ring ornaments that were purchased from Hobby Lobby. I love the berries and the greenery. And I'm just going to place them around on the tree. I actually wish I had more of them. And some green old world looking ornaments that were purchased from Hobby Lobby as well. Now I did place an old world Santa, actually a few of them on the tree. And I actually got these gorgeous Santas from Walmart for, I believe they were just $1.97 a piece. Unbelievable, they're absolutely gorgeous. So as I'm unpacking boxes, I will be adding in pieces here and there. And I just unpacked these, my sweet little winter birdies. And these little small birdies were purchased just recently from the flower gallery and they're gonna go on the tips of the branches. Next, we have a mixture of different types of nuts. We have Brazil nuts, my favorite, the filberts, and some pecans. And we're gonna go ahead and just cut these open and place them inside the baskets. I have a wonderful memory I'd like to share with you all about my mother. We used to sit on the sofa, cracking fresh nuts during the holidays. And as we enjoyed our old musical movies, mom more so than myself, she just, she had, mother had a beautiful voice, one that was even invited onto the Lawrence Welk show. And I don't know what was more exciting, hearing mother sing, or the handful of cracked filberts she would lovingly pass to me. I suppose it was a little bit of both. Anyhow, I like adding the mixture of all the dried nuts into Christmas every year. There's nothing like a fresh, oh, a, a fresh pecan nut. They're just, they're fabulous, and the Brazils. These are um, this is an oily nut, very meaty, and fabulous. And they can be tricky when you crack them open. They do like to stick to the shell, so it's always nice to have that one little piece that helps you pry out the nut from the shell. And we're just going to go ahead and pour in the filberts. My children, they love it when I crack them filberts as well, like Mama used to do. It's special sitting there making memories and cracking nuts, something so simple. I truly cherish it and I just add in the nutcrackers. And next I have foiled chocolates. They're all hollow and there's a string up at top of each one which makes it easy to wrap around the branch and just tie it on. And it's great because 
we go and we eat the nuts and then we go for the sweetie. We go and get one of these chocolates and just take it off the tree. And the children know it's pretty open range. They don't have to ask mom if they can have one. They're there for the taking. So here is my edible tree. I place baskets of nuts on my tree and foil wrap chocolates. And I will be adding more edibles as well, but that's in the next video. So it's coming together nicely. There are just a couple more items I still have to place in the tree. But I have to find them in the boxes first. <laughs> now next we're going to move on over to the buffet. I placed my basket, my large basket from Pottery Barn on top. And what's my saying about baskets? Why do I like using baskets so much? Because you get to open them or if they don't have a lid, you just fill them. That is what is so great about baskets, filling them. I added my vintage antique lamp over to the right. It was a thrifted find. I was very excited. And here is her gorgeous golden glow. An absolute beauty. I will be adding this garland that I purchased from the flower gallery. It looks real. I, I absolutely love this piece. I just placed it around up at the top and I added in a smaller basket from Pottery Barn. I opened up the lid and guess what? I get to fill it. <laughs> Two baskets. I like the layering look. But first, before we begin filling, I'm gonna place these fairy lights on my garland and I will link these in my description box. These fairy lights, they just, they just, they look gorgeous in any arrangement that you place them in. We're going to begin by adding in this golden holly bush. Yes, it is real. We are in the sunroom. So I'm gonna try to bring in as much of the real greenery as I can. I love the variegated leaves. The yellow on the green just really makes things pop. I placed it right inside the smaller basket. I put it on top of a riser. I wanted it to come out a bit more. And I'm gonna just add a cozy little burlap blanket inside the basket as well. Next, I'm adding this utterly charming thatched roof cottage. I purchased this from Wegman's grocery store. It offers the perfect touch 
of magical whimsy. And on the back, there's actually a little switch, and there it goes, it lights up. Absolutely magical. This placement is picture book perfect under the holly berry tree. Next, let's add a touch of wooded forest. The thatched cottage in the golden lit holly berry forest makes for the perfect visit during the holiday season. Now I will be adding some large pine cones from Hobby Lobby. And this is what is called a winter berry bush. It's just the sweetest thing ever. And if you gently take one of the berries off and squeeze it, it has the perfect peppermint smell. Absolutely perfect. Oh! 